again, welcome to session four of week seven in virology part one. This week we're talking about viral DNA synthesis. And for this session, I wanted to focus on viral origins of replication. We've defined them at the specific sites in viral genome where DNA synthesis initiates. And we've talked a little bit about uh, origin binding proteins and how they allow initiation of, of DNA synthesis. So I thought we would just take a little uh, side view here on exactly what these origins look like. Uh, we've talked about the single origin of replication of the small SV40 genome. That's shown up here. It's labeled ORI. And again, it's where DNA replication starts and proceeds in a bidirectional manner, forming a replication bubble. The parvovirus single-stranded DNA genome has an origin of replication here at the left end where there's a 3' prime hydroxyl. The adenovirus genome, the double-stranded linear DNA genome of adenovirus, has an origin of replication at either end. And we showed that that was a binding site for the polymerase together with the pre-terminal protein. And at the bottom here is the linear double-stranded DNA genome of a herpes virus. And these genomes are unusual. They consist of what are called long and short segments, which can invert with respect to each other and form four different kinds of isomers. Uh, but for the purposes of this session, uh, this genome has three origins. It has a single what's called ORI L. It's present in the large genome segment. And it has two ORI S's. They're identical. They're in the smaller S genome segment. In general, these origins are AT-rich DNA segments, and they're recognized by uh, origin recognition proteins, and in general, their function is to seed the assembly of multi-protein complexes. We saw, for example, with SV40, how the origin is bound by large T, two hexamers of large T, which sets the stage for the rest of the DNA synthesis apparatus to come in. As you can see from this picture, some viral genomes have one ORI. Uh, others have multiple, like the herpes virus genome has three. And of course, our chromosomes have hundreds and hundreds of origins of replication. Let's look even closer at these origins. Here are three of them in very great detail. The SV40 origin, the ORI L origin of herpes simplex uh, virus type 1, and the left end origin of adenovirus type 2. These have some features in common, and I want to highlight uh, two of them, or let's say three of them in particular. First of all, they all contain AT-rich elements, and they're shown in this um, kind of olive green color. Here's one in the SV40 origin. Here's one in the Oriel of herpes and also the Paul PTP uh, binding site is shown um, in, in the orange as well. That's AT-rich. What's the significance of being AT-rich? Well, it turns out that AT base pairs are a bit weaker than GC base pairs, so they're easier to denature. And remember, the core, the origin, is where... DNA synthesis begins, and that can only begin if the DNA is denatured. So it makes sense to have this area AT rich to facilitate denaturation. So all these origins have in common uh, at least the part of them that is AT rich. Uh, secondly, these have repeated sequences that bind origin binding proteins. So here, for example, in the SV40 origin, you have these. Um, repeated yellow regions shown with arrows to show their directionality. And these are where the T antigen is binding. And uh, when you have multimers of a protein binding, you repeat the sequence to which it is bound. And that's why you have multiple copies of these protein binding sites in the origins. And finally, these origins of replication. So here for the SV40, this is a minimal origin of replication shown by this arrow. It's called the core origin here. You can get DNA replication using just this sequence, but if you include neighboring sequences shown here in this figure, you get even more efficient initiation of DNA synthesis.
So here is the core origin for SV40. Here is the origin for herpes simplex type 1, uh, delineated by the blue boxes. Uh, and here is the core origin for adenovirus. But next to these origins, in all three cases, there are uh, binding sites for transcriptional regulators. And indeed, in the herpes simplex origin, there are transcription initiation sites. So here in the SV40 origin, there are binding sites for a transcription factor called SP1. And we, don't, we haven't covered transcription yet in this course. We'll be talking about that next. Transcription, of course, is the process of making RNA from a DNA template. It involves an RNA polymerase as well as transcription proteins that participate in the process. And these proteins bind at these sites called SP1 binding sites, for example, NF1 binding sites, OCT1 binding sites. So you can see uh, these origins tend to have transcriptional regulatory regions neighboring them, either factor binding sites or promoters themselves. The red arrow is actually a promoter from which RNA synthesis initiates. Here's a gene encoding a protein called UL29, and its mRNA initiates uh, at the right at the red arrow. So AT rich elements, repeated sequences for binding of origin binding proteins, and proximity to transcriptional regulatory regions are all common features of viral origins of replication. Here are some of the proteins that we know bind origins. These are viral proteins. We've talked about the T antigen of polyomaviruses, specifically SV40. And I told you this specifically binds uh, to DNA to begin the replication process. A, another small circular double-stranded DNA virus, papillomaviruses, its protein called E1 binds to the origin in the presence of a second viral protein called E2. The adeno-associated virus or parvovirus rep6878 protein uh, binds to the ends of the viral DNA, which is the origin of replication. And we talked about how it's involved in nicking the DNA to get the, the termini sequ uh, sequences represented. The preterminal protein of adenovirus binds at the origins at the end and recruits the DNA polymerase, which then will add a C residue to the preterminal region, uh, preterminal protein, excuse me, which serves as a primer for DNA synthesis. And finally, the protein of herpes virus called the UL9 protein. Uh, this recruits viral proteins to the origin of replication, which of course is AT rich and helps unwind the DNA, very much like T helps unwind uh, SV40 DNA. So SV40T has played a large role in our discussion so far of DNA synthesis. It will continue to play a role in this week. And um, if you happen to take part two of this course, which should occur sometime after part one, we don't know exactly how long after it, maybe immediately, maybe later, we're not sure yet. In part two, we talk about how viruses cause disease, and you will see how large T causes cells to be transformed on the way to becoming uh, tumors, basically. So this picture is a diagram of SV40 large T. And it's the protein is shown as a blue bar. And here on the left is the first amino acid. It is 708 amino acids long. And on this are shown various functional regions of this multifunctional protein. Now, we know from our discussion that it is an origin-binding protein. And here is the region of SV40T that is involved in binding to the origin of replication. But look at all the other domains of this protein. And some of them we'll, we'll discuss in some detail. Uh, for example, we know that the T protein helps to recruit the polymerase alpha to DNA. And you remember the polymerase alpha is involved in making uh, the early primers of DNA replication in the short DNAs. The, and, and Paul Alpha, of course, interacts with primase to do that. 
SV40T interacts with Paul alpha in, in these two regions. So these are the important amino acids involved in interaction with Paul alpha. There is a short part, which is a nuclear localization signal. This helps get the T antigen into the nucleus. Remember, the protein is made in the cytoplasm, but it has to do its work in the nucleus because that's where the viral DNA is, and that's where viral DNA replication occurs. So this signal, the NLS, gets the SV40T back into the nucleus so it can work. What else uh, is important here? Uh, there is uh, in, There are two interaction sites for these proteins that are labeled RB and P53. These are incredibly important, as you will see, not only in this course, but in the second part as well. Uh, RB and P53 are crucial cell proteins that regulate the cell cycle. They make sure that cells only divide when they have to, and SV40T binds both of them. And the consequence of that you'll see uh, in a moment. And in addition, SV40T is modified by phosphorylation at many amino acids, as shown here. And the red phosphorylation sites inhibit its activity at the origin, and the green ones stimulate its activity. So it's a highly regulated protein. This protein is also species-specific. SV40 is a virus that infects monkeys, as you could gather from the name. It does not replicate its genome well in other species, and that is because the T protein uh, doesn't interact with the Paul A primase of other species. So T is controlling uh, whether DNA replication occurs in other species. And as I've said, um, or I've hinted to, the T antigen binds and sequesters cell cycle regulators. So RB and P53 are two cell cycle regulators. T antigen binds and sequesters them. That makes cells enter the S phase of replication. And why the virus would want to do that will become obvious in the next segment. So let's review how these origin binding proteins work again. On the left, again, is the SV40 origin of replication, which we've discussed binds two hexamers of large T. These induce conformational changes in the origin that allow RPA to come in topoisomerase and cause the denaturation of the double-stranded DNA, making two single strands so that replication can subsequently occur. So it's an origin-binding protein that participates uh, in the denaturation by helping to recruit uh, RPA in topo-1. And that's SV40. On the right is an example of a papillomavirus origin of replication, uh, this is another small DNA virus with a double-stranded circular DNA genome. Uh, papillomaviruses, as the name would suggest, are involved in the, the formation of warts, papillomas. Uh, and there are papillomaviruses of many different animals. BPV happens to be bovine papillomavirus. This causes uh, warts in, in bovine species, cows. Uh, there are human papillomaviruses, of course, that cause warts, and some of those also cause cervical cancers. So here's the origin of replication of BPV. It's a single origin, just like SV40. It binds E1, which is an origin-binding protein, much like L LT, large T, of SV40, but uh, it binds only in the presence of E2, which is another viral protein. Once E2 helps E1 to bind, E1 stays there on its own and facilitates in the denaturation of the DNA around the origin, which, as you know, is necessary for uh, DNA replication to occur. Mm -hmm.